IMO 2020 International Mathematical Olympiad Problem Number 6. The problem is the following. Prove that there exists a positive constant C such that the following statement is true. Consider an integer n greater than 1 and a set S of n points in the plane such that the distance between any two different points in S is at least 1. It follows that there is a line L separating S such that the distance from any point of S to L is at least C n to the power of minus 1 over 3. A line L separates a set of points S if some segment joining two points in S crosses L. Note, weaker results with C n to the power of minus 1 over 3 replaced by C n to the minus alpha may be awarded points depending on the value of the constant alpha greater than one third. So let's consider something before going to the key idea. So if uh, we consider this line as uh, the problem said, uh, a line L separates a set of point S. So here we consider this line separate these points S for at least one point uh, on top of that and one point below that. So if we, with our loss of generality, we can call the points from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, to end like this. And the distance of the feet we draw perpendicular from one to two n to this line. And we consider the distance of feet of one and two d1, two and three d2, two, n minus between n minus one and n. We call this distance on this line be n minus one. So, if we consider m be m the maximum of d1 to dn minus 1, if we prove that m over 2 is greater than or equal c constant c over n uh, radical of 3, then we can prove the problem because then we can draw line perpendicular to this line. And all, if we consider all points, the distance of all points from this line would be greater than or equal m over 2. So, Let's see what we have now. We know that the, from the assumption of the problem, distance between each two points is at least 1. So if we consider this v and this h, v squared plus h squared equals s squared is greater than or equal 1 because their distance is s and it's greater than 1 equal 1. So if we, for example, decrease h, then v would be increased. And now, let's consider another thing. If we have t points in this, from this point, from this place, this is the starting point, finishing point. We have some points here, for example, t points, and also some points, all of them t points, and the length of this line d. Then we can say if m, uh, like the previous one, we define, for example, d1, d2, to here we had n points, so we had dn to dn minus 1. Here we have t points, so we have to dt minus 1. So we know that m, big M, is maximum of d1 to dt minus 1. We can say big D, the length of the whole line, whole segment from here to here, this line segment, is less than or equal t minus 1. Because look, d here, we can say equal d1 to d t minus 1 because we have t points. Each of them is less than m because m by the definition of big M is the maximum of them. So we have t minus 1 m. So d is less than or equal to t minus 1 big M. And we call this one three stars. And if you divide both sides by m and then take minus 1 to the left hand side then we can say 1 plus d over m is less than equality. We call this one 1 equality number 1, uh, inequality number 1. And let's check another thing. If here we consider, for example, d1, d2 to d1, d2 to dt. And if small m equals minimum of d1 to dt minus 1, then we can say d equals d1 to dt 
minus 1, so all of them are greater than equal small m. So we have t minus 1 small m m's and so d the length of this is greater than equal t minus 1 times small m. We are considering all things about length about small m, big m. Now let's consider another thing. Suppose that we bound the points by two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. All points are here. And suppose that we have t points here and we define this big M for this length F. So, as we said here, T, the number of points, is greater than or equal 1 plus this length over big M. So, by 1, we can say that T is greater than this length F. Here, F, in that statement, it was D, F over M, big M plus 1. And now we consider the vertical line, this length. In this length, we know that here this length is f so since f squared plus for example if we consider the minimum uh, d1 here vertical line if we consider for example look if we consider these points and if we consider for example d1 here for vertical lines and if we consider minimum of them small m we can say by Pythagorean theorem as we said here we can say that m is greater than equal 1 minus f squared because this length is less than or equal f so this length is greater than equal 1 minus f squared by Pythagorean theorem since the distance of each two points is at least 1 and now we can say if we consider this length z we can say it is greater than equal as we said here Let's find what we said here. If we use here by double star, we said d is greater than equal t minus 1 times a small m. So here we know that the small m is greater than equal 1 minus f squared. So z, z here is greater than equal t minus 1 is what? f over m greater than equal this. And small m is greater than equal 1 minus square root of 1 minus f squared. So we prove that this z is greater than equal f over m times square root of 1 minus f squared. f was length of this and m is the maximum of, for example, if we call d prime, the, uh, the feet on this line. If we consider all of them, m is the biggest one between the distance of two consecutive, each consecutive feet now, we consider maximum distance between all two points, if we consider all pairs of points, uh, each of them as a distance, each two points, and P is the maximum one. So if we draw a circle like this, with radius P and the center of this point, and also similarly for this point, we draw a circle, all points are here, because for example, if one point is here, then their distance is greater than P, and we have contradiction since p was the greatest one. So all points are here. Now, if I consider f, we know that this distance, well, the assumption of the problem is greater than equal 1. So if I consider f less than or equal 1 half constant, so it is on the left. If I consider this line, I can say f is on the light, on the left side of this line radical x of these two circles so we call this one f we call it the whole line a b z so this is z half z half because this is circle this is center and center we connect to center and we draw the perpendicular from f to this line so here is z half and z half since o r o a and o b are equal we can say these two the triangles are congruent, so AH equals BH, we consider them Z half. Now, AB is Z, and as we proved here, we proved that if we have F and if we have M here, we can say Z is greater than or equal F over big M times 1 square root of 1 minus F squared. We use that, and Z is greater or equal this part. And also, we know that Z over 2 equals AD squared, if we call this one D, AD squared minus DH squared, it's Z over 2. If we multiply both sides by 2, 
then z equals 2 square root of 80 squared minus dh squared equals 2 square root of 80 is what is p because we said dc is p and the radius was p p squared minus dh squared and dh squared this uh, this is p and this is f so this is p minus f squared now then we can say okay z is greater than equal this and z equal this so if we write them in one line z equals this from the previous page and z is greater than equal this one and also by the first things that we've reached p this distance is because we have n points here is less than or equal n minus 1 times big m m is the maximum distance of consecutive uh, feet of the points on this line cd we proved it by three stars here from the this part we said d is less than or equal p minus 1 times big m we proved it here and now we want to use that so we know that p is less than or equal n minus 1 times m is less than n times big m so we want to use that and we say okay z is greater than equal this like here z equals this z equals this one and we written again here so we write it here 2 times the square root of this term is less than so we know that p uh, you can say here p is less than nm so we replace pf with uh, 2 pf with 2 nmf and minus f squared we write it again 2 and now we say okay we conclude that uh, it is also less than we can ignore minus f squared it also less than 2 square root of 2 and m big m f square root of that greater than this one greater than f over big m times 1 minus f squared now if we multiply both sides by m and raise the power of 2 we will reach let's see what we have for no before before multiply both sides by m we raise both sides the power of 2 it will be 4 times 2 8 n big m f greater than f squared over big m squared times 1 minus f squared and then if we multiply both sides by m squared it will be and then divide both sides by 8 n f then m cubed is greater than f uh, we if we divide by f it would be f because it is f squared over f would be f times 1 minus f squared 8n here now we can say so m is greater than uh, f times 1 minus f squared over 8 radical 3 and if I count uh, times 1 over n radical 3 if I call this one 2c because f, if I consider f any constant between 1 and 1 half, then we can consider it 2c. So m over 2 is greater than c over n radical 3. As we wanted in the previous of the problem, we said, okay, if m over 2 is greater than equal constant c over n radical 3, then we can draw a line like this and all the distance from this line. And also this is a separating line because this point is on the opposite side of this point and all points because all points are here and the distance of all points from this red line is greater than equal c over n radical 3 and we prove this problem.